Insider Movie Talk, Movie Talk for Movie Fans. I'm your host, Natasha Martinez, and this is the daily show where we give you all the latest news in the world of movies, plus some insight into what it all means. Joining us today is John Campia. Well, greetings and salutations, everybody. Damn, there's a lot of big stuff to talk it about really today. Is. Very excited. Let's get to it. Also joining us, Mark Ellis. Cubs win! Cubs win! Cubs win! <laughs> also joining us, Christian Harloff. Hi! Hi! <laughs> Beachwood H! Hi! <laughs> and also joining us, Ken, Ken, Ken Napsack! Napsack is here. What if you were a hot dog, North? <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who may uh, miss the announcement, Ken Knapsack is, of course, the newest member of uh, full-time member of our Collider team. Yeah, Woo! Ken, welcome here. We're glad to have you. I'm so happy here to talk about movies with you guys and do bad impressions. Yours was great, Christian. Ken <laughs> wins. <laughs> Ken Hi. wins. Hi. Ken Hi. wins. Hi. Well, uh, something happened in the world of movies today, Natasha. What was it? Yeah, just a little something. Warner Brothers and DC Films have released the new trailer for Wonder Woman, directed by Patty Jenkins. The film will show. Diana's life on the mystical island paradise of Themyscira, as well as her meeting with Steve Trevor before leaving her home to enter the throes of World War I. The movie stars Gal Gadot as Diana Prince alongside Chris Pine, Robin Wright, Connie Nielsen, and Lucy Davis. It hits theaters on June 2nd, 2017. John, what do you think about the new trailer for Wonder Woman? Look, it is well documented uh, that I have some apprehensions about Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman. Everybody, everybody knows that. You know, so, but there's no getting around it. This is a hell of a trailer. This is a hell of a trailer. This, the, the actual story, first of all, I don't know why we're at all surprised. No, I don't think a lot of us are surprised. Patty Jenkins is a terrific director. And seeing what she's doing. Look, Chris Pine is also looking really good in this. I thought that was spectacular. The action looks great. They gave a little bit more sense of the story. It was a thoroughly entertaining trailer. And I say this all the time. If the job of a trailer is to get you even more excited or even initially interested in a film, this trailer does it. I'll go so far as to say this. I think this is my second favorite trailer of the year. I'll put it behind that Logan trailer. That Johnny Cash video was amazing. But this trailer was spectacular. I absolutely loved it. Christian, you had a chance to see it. What did you think? Agreed. I loved this trailer. I liked the first one a lot, um, but th this one showed a little bit more of what we're getting in this movie. And I think that it's the first movie to really, I mean, Suicide Squad, obviously, with David Ayer, but I, I just felt like this movie separated itself in tone because I got elements, of, like when I saw the battle scenes, the epic scale just in the beginning, and say what you will about Troy, the movie Troy, the actual battle scenes were done very well, and it reminded me of that that kind of epic tone there but then um it just it, there was just something about it that i the, the and that there was like some lord of the rings feel the the, the fantasy element of what they the way yeah. that they did it but the perfect blend of putting it in uh, our our world also not just not just hers so she looks great gal gadot to me looks great as wonder woman and she worked hard to get to where she is now and i feel like she it already looks like she's carrying it. she looks like the wonder woman i always envisioned coming to life the action of what Patty Jenkins is doing so far in just these two trailers. I am super excited for this movie. I think this movie, and there's, the jokes to me worked. They didn't seem forced in this trailer. Now, I don't know what the movie's gonna hold, but this particular trailer, it didn't feel like, oh, they're just putting humor in there to do it. It fit with what they're going for in the story. And it also showed, we've seen what she can do. We've seen what Wonder Woman can do in Batman v Superman. Yeah. When she walks out of the battlefield. So it was kind of almost, there was so, a little humor in it when she gets up and he's like, oh, Diana, no. And even Ellis and I were watching, like, don't worry, she's gonna be okay. She's, she's cool, she's fine. I like that, I like the tone that they set for her. I'm, I'm really excited for this movie. Ken, you had a chance to check it out this morning, what did you think? I've checked it out several times, including with the sound off, just to take in the visuals. <laughs> right. Uh, because this is a vi great visual trailer. We've been waiting far too long for female-led superhero, 75 years, you could say, right. with Wonder mm -hmm. Woman. And there, while there's a lot of pressure on it, this trailer shows that we're gonna be okay. And what excites me, I can admit to not being a superhero guy. My superheroes have capes and lightsabers. But <laughs> this this brings things you mentioned. It, Lord of the Rings, it's a war picture. It's things I haven't seen in a lot of superhero pictures in the last couple of years. And I'm already intrigued. And I thought the trailer won Comic-Con. This trailer wins this week, too. Yeah, I agree. That The, the original Wonder Woman trailer did win Comic-Con. I completely agree. Now, let's not forget about... 
Catwoman and Aeon Flux and Elektra there, Yay. but this is in the new era of comic book films. Some of us have, John. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to keep it that way. Ellis, you had a chance to see it. What did you think? Oh, my compliments to the chef, John. If the first Wonder Woman trailer was like a great meal at Outback Steakhouse, which y'all know I love, this was Morton's, man. This was everything that I wanted, <laughs> and if that first trailer, I did, I loved what I saw in the first trailer. I thought the actual trailer cut together but was a little clunky. This one was such a smooth, perfect two and a half minute movie. We got got all the great visuals we got great action sequences i love the dialogue in here it felt like it was of the times and then getting to see those little notes of humor that did not feel forced it, they, it felt to totally natural watching the way that her and chris pine were interacting that was my question leaving the first trailer is how is their chemistry going to be it looks like everything that i would want to see in wonder woman and i can't believe we have to wait this long to see the actual movie now yeah we've now had two full trailers for a movie that's still i believe seven months away which is a little odd, but you know what? We actually had our, our own Natasha and Wendy do a live uh, yeah, react are. trailer reaction to this this morning. So I just thought, I haven't even asked you guys about this yet. What did you two think about the Wonder Woman trailer? We loved it. The whole time I was just like, yes, yes, <laughs> because everything was so epic. One of the one of my favorite set photos that I saw, like way back when those first were released, were the horses and you know all of the women on there and they're going into battle. So when I saw that, in action I was just so for it I cannot wait for this movie Gal Gadot's a badass and she's beautiful so I can't wait to see it all go down what do you think, I agree Wendy? with you I think the beach uh, war scene was by far my favorite along with the archer swinging down from the clip shooting I was like wow this is I mean if I was anybody walking onto that beach I would just you know you know what it's, I'm just gonna leave my weapon right here you guys can I'm just have a good day. <laughs> yeah, I think the only part, the only part of the trailer that I didn't think was absolutely spectacular was maybe the last joke. Just, I, I thought Aww. that was a joke that could have been in the trailer, but it didn't feel like the joke you end the trailer with, with the fisticuffs. Like I, I thought that might have fit earlier, but other than that, I mean, this was just spectacular. Now I'm trying to temper my enthusiasm a little bit because I believe the Batman versus Superman trailer was far and away the best trailer of last year. I thought, and it you know, didn't quite turn out to be the all-encompassing, magnificent film that everybody universally loved. So I'm trying to temper it, but all we're talking about is the trailer here, and I thought the trailer was just top notch. Well, and here's where we go from here, is what, what was the mistake that Batman v Superman made in their advertising campaign is they showed us way too much of the movie. It was like they were getting desperate. If Wonder Woman can keep on this pace, but not show us the entire film, that's gonna be the key until the movie actually comes out. Now look, I really wanna know what you guys think about this. Now look, we all understand that just because a trailer is good doesn't necessarily mean the movie's good. I understand that. But what did you think of the trailer? Jump into the comment section, leave your thoughts, let us know what you thought about it. <coughs> Does it make you more excited for the movie? Did it not do it for you? Let us know. We want to hear what you guys think. All right, what's next? Disney announced yesterday that the studio has set a new global record for itself by marking this year its biggest at the box office to date. And the year isn't <laughs> even over yet. Disney's previous record in 2015 saw grosses of $5.84 billion with films like Star Wars, The Force Awakens, Avengers, Age of Ultron, and Pixar's Inside Out. As of now, in 2016, Disney has already grossed $5.85 billion thanks in part to having four spots in the top 10 highest grossing films of the year. Finding Dory at number one, Captain America Civil War at number two, The Jungle Book at number four, and Zootopia at number six. This does not take into account that they have yet to release Doctor Strange, Moana, or Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. <laughs> Christian, what do you think about the box office report for Disney? Almost there. Almost there. <laughs> Stay on target. <laughs> yeah, it, look, man, like, we talked about this last year when Universal, it, it, with one of the biggest box offices the biggest of all time the biggest year. of all time what last they year. did last year no one expected them to do that yeah because what, what was it, it was fast it was, Furious, it was, uh, it was uh, mission, 50 shades of gray right it was, it was jurassic world was the big yeah. one as well I and mean, they had a whole bunch of surprise hits as well as expected it's hits. just they, they kicked ass and so i remember us talking on i think it was movie talk last year will disney beat it this year and i think we all did say yes because of all the movies they have coming out they haven't done it yet but I mean, come on, they already beat their record, and that is a feat all on its own, considering that how much money The Force Awakens alone made last year. So this, this is gonna be something that inevitably happens. You got Moana, you've got Rogue One, and you have Doctor Strange. They're gonna beat it. I mean, there's, there's no doubt about it. The question is, are they gonna beat it again when they've got <laughs> episode eight coming out, you know, and, and these other movies? So it's, uh, they, the, what they have done with, 
with Bob Iger, again, you guys know I love Bob Iger and what he's done over there. It was a great strategy from them going, getting Marvel, re, you know, making sure that Pixar was back in the fray, doing their own uh, Disney animation, the remakes of Disney. Remember, you got Beauty and the Beast next year too. So they're just they're they're dominating right now. They had they're set up. It's very similar to the Cubs. The Cubs right now <laughs> won the championship last night, and they ha they're they're set up to continue to win. Disney is set up to continue to win. Universal. Had a nice run last last year. Great year last year. Big big year for them. It didn't really, they didn't really see it coming, but it's not going to be as easy for them to do it as Disney. The part that really shakes me about this one is that okay, they're only one billion away from last year's all time mark held by Universal, which I believe is six point eight billion. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong about that. Um, and they're already at you know five point eight. They're only one billion away, and they still have Moana to come. They still have Doctor Strange and oh yeah, that little Star Wars movie at the same time. And they've already broken their own record with three of three of their biggest right. films of the year to come at the same time. You're mentioning something that Disney does so well is that not only did they you know, go out and get these properties like Marvel and you know Lucasfilm and stuff like that. But they continue to make their own in-house great little Queen of Cotway continues to be one of my favorite movies of the year. It wasn't a big box office blockbuster, but they continue to make these great smaller films, great animated films, great spectacle blockbusters. They run the gambit on all these things, and I think they've done a great job. But anyway, Kenny, your thoughts on this whole box office situation? It's it's amazing what Disney does, and they they. It's not a fluke. It's not like Universal. It's not like Maris hitting 61 and 61. This is Sosa and McGuire year after year just hitting more. Not saying they're on anything. <laughs> I, I was just recently at Disney Town, their little uh, little theme park for kids over there, and you, they do such a good job of advertising to their own consumers. I used to get a turkey leg, and it was just a generic turkey leg. It's now the Incredible Hulk's green and spicy turkey leg. Like, really? It's, it's, they just feed it to you constantly, and like you said, they acquire properties, put them together, and just say climb into our world, we know what we're doing, and you trust them. So every movie, Rogue One might not make as much as Force Awakens, but we trust it's going to be good, despite the second trailer. Um, so <laughs> I, I think uh, I, I'm just, it's amazing too, also when you look at like the disappointing summer, this was a disappointing blockbuster summer, so many people are just handing over cash, and, and the movie industry is booming, and just these numbers are insane. How much money do you put into Disneyland every year? Uh, I, I put a, a, a fair amount. <laughs> <laughs> Those Disneyland. are not turkey legs, by the way. They're actually emu. That's the rumor I heard. <laughs> I heard that they're giant birds, and yes, those emus are definitely PED'd, like Sosa McGuire were. Let's keep the baseball comparisons coming, because I agree with everything Christian said, except for Thank the you. Cubs comparison. Other oh. than cute ears, they have nothing in common. Disney is the New York Yankees, my friend. They are not going to wait another 108 years before they win another I'm a Yankee fan, but we ain't winning championships over the last if couple years. If you look years. historically, Disney is going to be doing this year after year after yeah, year. This is yeah. not the last time they're going to be setting a record. It's going to be adorable when they make seven point three billion dollars at the end of this year and they're going to top that next year universal was like chuck wepner they're just they couldn't believe they were getting a shot at the title it's rare that that's going to happen when you look at what they have next year they got beauty and the beast coming out and they have the star wars movie in addition to all the other fanfare that they'll have with marvel and pixar and their animation companies so it's only getting brighter and they're already blinded by their future all right let me ask you guys this and we we've you know, alluded a little bit to what Disney has coming in 2017. Obviously, Disney is going to break the all-time record this year. They've already broken their own record this year. Will Disney beat this year's record next year? I'm going to start off. I'm going to say no. They will not beat their, their – they're going to have an amazing year, but they will not beat this year. i got to look at everything coming out. I mean, I know that obviously with Beauty and the Beast and Episode Eight, that that's the shot right their there. Their front horses but, look pretty good. But they got to right? pepper yeah, in some more stuff. So I don't know. i gotta, I got to look at it because right now, just those two movies, I know they have more, but just those two, uh, no. But i got to see what else they have coming out. I, it, it's tough because we see. don't have – I'm not sure what the Marvel slate is going to give us yet because there's, there's going to be different Marvel movies coming out that aren't quite – Infinity War, but you do have Thor Ragnarok right. in addition to their other stuff coming out. So I think it's going to be close. I think Ken Knapsack definitely breaks his all-time turkey eating leg record, but <laughs> I don't I don't know that we're going to get another one next year. I'm going to say they will do it, though. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say they will do it because they're not going to rest on their laurels. It's not going to be Force Awakens, Beauty and the Beast, and like mm -hmm. a two-hour movie of Walt Disney talking about how he doesn't want gum at Disneyland. It, <laughs> they're going to make, they know what they're doing, and yeah, maybe Thor is an Infinity War, but 
they, they have the fan base. People are just going in to see what they do. And I, it's going to be tough. It's a big, giant number. But then Barry Bonds came along and took care of that big number, too, <laughs> from 98. So it can happen. Sports references, Martin. Baseball kids, play it. All right. Listen, guys, it is Thursday, which means it's time for us to talk a little bit about what is opening this week. Wait, am I forgetting something? Yeah, we thought about Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, I didn't forget about Guardians. Yeah, so now that's another one coming next yeah. year. Yeah, so I'm sorry, just going through all the stuff that they have coming out. Yeah, you want to run the show now? No, I'm just, I'm saying, <laughs> <laughs> I just, as far as every and Dis, and Pirates of the Caribbean, they have, they have that some stuff. Coming, they look, have some stuff. They're, John, they're you going can't to give us these year. pop quiz questions without giving us at least a day to prepare for this. You just can't do it. Does Spider-Man: Homecoming count though? Uh, no, that's no, a Sony. Sony. I know, that'll but, go, but that'll go under Sony. Well, but how much money do, does Marvel get from them? Than that well, at I, all? I just don't think their box office total will technically count against Disney's box they office total. They get a total. shiny. They nickel, get a big man. check, I'm no, sure, no doubt. Uh, but as I was saying, we, it is Thursday, so which means we need to talk about the other films. We talked about Doctor Strange earlier on Tuesday. We got two other big films opening up this week. Natasha, tell us all about them. Well, you have Trolls opening this week, a Poppy voiced by Anna Kendrick, the optimistic leader of the Trolls, and Branch voiced by Justin Timberlake. Her polar opposite embark on an adventure that takes them far beyond the only world they've ever known. We also have Hacksaw Ridge coming out, the true story of Desmond T. Doss, played by Andrew Garfield, who won the Congressional Medal, Medal of Honor despite refusing to bear arms during World War II on religious grounds. Doss was drafted and ostracized by fellow soldiers for his pacifist stance, but went on to earn respect and adoration for his bravery, selflessness, and compassion after he risked his life without firing a shot to save 75 men in the Battle of Okinawa. Jeez. Um, I, look, Trolls is one of those films that, you know, I thought, oh my, why are they doing this movie? What's this one about? I have not seen it yet. I'm going to go out and see Trolls tonight. But I've been shocked by guys like Christian Harloff to my left and a bunch of other people I know who have seen the movie that are actually coming up and going, you know what? It's pretty good. And the reviews for it have been really strong. That's great. Hacksaw Ridge is one I've been dying to see ever since they announced it. It looks great. There's already a lot of Oscar buzz for this film uh, around Andrew Garfield, around Mel Gibson, around the picture as a whole. Um, so I'm really excited to see that. you got a lot of winning films out this week because you've got Doctor Strange, which is something you absolutely should go see, Hacksaw Ridge, Trolls. I mean, these are three films. It seems like it's one of these weeks that you cannot lose regardless of what you pick to go see tonight. Christian, you saw yeah. Trolls. Should people be looking forward to going to see it? Yeah, listen, it, it it's is it a great movie? I don't know if I'm going to go as far as say great, but it is a lot better than I thought it would be. It's enjoyable. It's great for kids. Again, I have a five-year-old daughter. Your daughter loves she it. She loved it, and she's already she's obsessed with it already. You know, Poppy and Branch. I know them all already because she keeps talking about them. So and that's that's what you want this to do. And you also want programming for families. When you have a movie like Hacksaw Ridge and and Doctor Strange coming out, and families want to go to the movies, what are they going to see? They're going to see Trolls. And is it a movie that where kids are going to watch, uh, adults are going to watch and be like, oh, just get me out of here. I can't believe she wants me to watch this movie again. But it's not. It's enjoyable. It's warm. There's a lot to it. And I took my wife to it also, and she enjoyed watching it. They use the music in the right way. Anna Kendrick is great. The voice talent's really good. Justin Timberlake does a good job. But on, this, on the other side of that, Hacksaw Ridge is something to see. Uh, Mel Gibson just knows how to shoot action. There's some stuff in the beginning that I felt was a little paint by numbers and it was a little cheesy in the very beginning. And then it kicks into the, and when you find out what this story is all about and the fact that this is a true story, Andrew Garfield is incredible. I hope he gets some consideration in this movie for best actor when we get to Oscar season. But this is an accomplishment again for Mel Gibson as a director because this movie is, it's something to see. Ken, are you looking forward to seeing either of these? You know, John, I go to bed lonely every night, but I'm, <laughs> I'm okay with it because I don't have a family and therefore don't have to see trolls. Um, but I will definitely catch Hacksaw Ridge simply because I'm, I'm a World War II buff, which is weird to study that kind. It's a dark time, but it's a grand epic time in our generation and our, uh, uh, in America. So I'm a, I love World War II stuff, and this looks amazing. It's a story I'm not familiar with, and it seems like it's a different story. It's about a guy with no weapon saving lives, and it looks epic. It looks beautiful, all those big buzzwords. And, <laughs> you know, Gibson knows how to direct, and I'm, I'm there for it. 
Mark, which one are you looking forward to? Hacksaw seeing? Ridge is the best movie you're going to see in theaters this weekend. I thought Doctor Strange was really good. I liked watching it a lot. Trolls is fun. It's cute for kids. I am I'm I'm in between Christian and Ken because I don't have kids. If I had a five year old, I would take him to see Hacksaw Ridge just to get a you know mm. this is what life is like, kid. Enjoy it. Right. Like for a movie that's based around a guy who did not pick up a gun, there's a lot of violence in this movie. I mean, it is it gets gory, it gets graphic, but I think it's worth the price of admission because it really tells a pretty incredible story. All right, guys, we reached that part of the show for buy or sell. Here's how this works. In front of her, Natasha's got a few other items in the world of movie news. She's going to run them down. Then those of us at the table are simply going to say whether we buy it or sell it. So, Natasha, what do we got? Star Wars The Force Awakens director J.J. Abrams has shed some more light on two key relationships from last year's hit film. Thanks to a Tumblr account, Mummies and Lightsabers, via a report from Screen Rant, and the new bonus commentary featured on the upcoming 3D Collector's Edition Blu-ray, Abrams reveals that Rey and Kylo Ren have never met before the events of Star Wars The Force Awakens. One of the new relationships that we were focusing on was between Kylo Ren and Rey. They've never met, but he's heard of this girl. Ken, buy or sell JJ's comments that Rey has never met Kylo Ren before. I am buying this like one of those coked out Wall Street workers in Wolf of Wall Street down on the ground in the stock exchange. I'm flinging my hands in the air. I'm buying, I'm buying, I'm buying it. This is spectacular news for a nerd who, like me who crawls into the Star Wars bubble and picks up on little things. And one of my favorite parts of Force Awakens was Kylo Ren going, what girl? And how it caused problems even for Snoke. And all, and like, if this girl's who you, bring her to me if she's got power. And this kind of confirms that the, the, the rumors and, and, uh, of, of who Rey is might have already been floating around the Star Wars story bubble uh, for those characters, and it makes me very excited. I love that Force Awakens created a lot more Star Wars lore for us to dig into. Christian? Yeah, it's a big buy, man. Let's see, because it's, it's adding in. What I liked about it was that we, it's, they're not just making it up. Like next, as Ryan Johnson, you figure it out. No, 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 no. He knows who she is. Um, has heard of her before. They haven't met, but he it was like you said that what girl part. It makes a lot more sense now when you, right. when you hear it. It's just like, oh, so she was. What did Luke protect her? Did Luke put her there? I, I am so. And I was. It's funny because a year ago I was so on board with the fact that she was Ray Skywalker, and I'm on the opposite page now. Obviously from this too, because I think if you read a lot of the books, you know that six years ago from Force Awakens, Kylo and Luke were still together. So or. Ben Solo were, were still together. So the, they, they would have met if it was the daughter. The question is, I think someone was protecting her. I think that's why she was on Jakku, to be very secluded, very similar to what happened to the twins in the first place. And the fact that he's heard of her, how has she heard of her? Has she, was she the prodigy? Was she, like, what was it about this girl that he knows? The question is, how much does Snoke know? So it's, it's more questions to add. And I, I'm mad at myself because I had this damn Blu-ray <laughs> and I had the commentary about three, like a week ago, like almost four or five days ago. And I could have listened to it and I didn't. But now I will. You know, first of all, I buy the comments. This is this is so intriguing saying, number one, they've never met. He has never met this girl. And yet, at the same time, he has heard of the girl. Right. That, to me, that opens up so many more questions. But it does remind me, that whole part you are mentioning about Kylo Ren saying, what girl, right? It does, look, one of the pet peeves myself and most Canadians who live in the United States have is when, like, I'm talking to somebody and they say, oh, yeah, I'm from Canada. And they say, oh, you're from Canada. Do you know Jeff? <laughs> like, like we're supposed to, like, yeah, we all just hang out. And here's Kylo Ren. It's like, a girl on that planet? What girl? Like, maybe, like, has to be the same girl. It reminded me of that. But no, this is an intriguing statement. It's just going to get us buzzing and talking and open up a whole lot more theories. I, I agree with you, Christian. I think this goes more towards the fact that I don't think she's Skywalker's daughter or a Skywalker at all. But still, what does Snoke know? Who knows what? This is really intriguing stuff. Mark, what do you think about Oh, yeah, this? I buy it because when they talk about there's been an awakening, it's like clearly there's been some sort of ripple in the force with this girl. And I love that these people in the galaxy far, far away, they're not too different from us because they're wondering who's Ray, who's... <laughs> Who's Ray's little? Like, they're asking the same kind of questions they are. So I'm like, oh, cool. I feel a kinship with all those people. And it, it, it makes it neat for the war. And JJ, unlike different times when he's been interviewed about something, been asked a point blank question in an interview, and he has to lie his way out of it, like with the Star Trek II con thing. This one, this is a commentary. This is him giving us information willingly. So I don't think that it's going to backtrack. I do believe what he's saying here. 
I shouldn't have said that because Everyone, judging from yeah. the comments section, uh, I think my Twitter feed is going to be filled with I know Jeff yeah. Uh, yeah. from now on. So I that know Jeff. Jeff. That was yeah. probably Jeff, wanna, Jeff do want, Solo. Do you want to yeah. talk about Tragically Hip, Kids in the Hall? We can, <laughs> no. we can talk we can about that, that right all day long, buddy. Uh, all right. Do you guys have like a Star Wars show where I can discuss more of my race theories? <laughs> it's funny you should ask, Ken. Today we have Jedi Council coming up and you will be on the show today. Well, as a matter oh, of fact, right. Jedi Council is on later today. And you let's go to the wide shot. You're already this looking at the Jedi Council, Council today. today. This is this is the Jedi Council today. So you'll, yeah. we'll probably go a little bit more in depth in the story a little yeah. bit later. Yeah, on. and you know John Campy is from Canada. Yeah. You might know Brian Adams. <laughs> Come and check it out and see what it's all about. <laughs> I'm closer 69. with Corey Hart. <laughs> all right, what's next? <laughs> Universal Pictures has released a new trailer for the latest animated feature from Illumination Entertainment, Sing. The film takes place in a world populated by animals and revolving around a koala named Buster Moon, voiced by Matthew McConaughey, who must put on one big spectacular show to keep his theater from closing. Sing opens in theaters on December 21st. Mark Byer saw the new trailer for Sing. All right, finally I get to lead off a topic, and boy am I excited about <laughs> Sing. <laughs> <laughs> It, 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 it looks fine. It looks like a nice cash grab. I actually am going to buy the trailer, but it just it looks like something that you put kids in a theater during Christmas for two hours to shut them up because it's going to be a new character every 30 seconds, and you get to see, oh, that animal's cute, that animal's cute. Oh, I remember that hit song. I don't think there's going to be a lot of story to this, but I did fall in love with enough of the music and the way the characters look. I laughed watching this trailer somewhat, and I think McConaughey voicing that koala, I didn't like it in the no. first two trailers until I saw this one, and just something is probably the link in advertising clicked in my head and I was like you know what he's the perfect guy for a koala bear what do you think Christian I think Jeff loved it but I'm gonna buy it also <laughs> uh, I, I, yeah I'm buying it and it's, it's funny because we had a conversation I don't know if it was last week on movie talk if I look at movies a little different kids movies now based off of whether I think it'll be good for my kid or I think she'll enjoy it well I enjoy watching it and I am definitely gonna base this one off of the reactions that I was watching the last couple trailers with my daughter, and I'm going to go ahead and buy this because it's, it, it does seem fun. And I think we haven't seen a lot of movies around the, you know, like the voice and American Idol, like movies in, in an animation. I think it's kind of clever that they're doing it this way. I think it could be interesting the way that they're setting it all up in a Truman Show type of way at the very end with it, it, it's whatever those stinking animals were at the end when they were on the TV. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but You just turned 90 years old. Those stinking <laughs> badges. I don't like ah, the TV. I mean, it's not Wonder Woman, but I mean, come on. Uh, <laughs> overall, I think this could be interesting. I think it could be fun. Despicable Me, uh, not Despicable Me, uh, what's the if Secret Life of Pets didn't deliver the way I wanted it to, but maybe Sing will. Uh, you you got to tell the story about what your daughter was singing around the house today. Though. Oh well, I mean, it was it, that, that, that. That's the one thing, though. It was, <laughs> I that, thought that was it, hilarious. Well, it was interesting, though, because you you hear like Eminem in a kids movies trailer. You're like, yep. that, does that work? And you hear lyrics, like, I guess it could, but I just don't want my daughter going, "Who's that artist? I want to listen some more of his stuff." <laughs> um, but it's the. You know, she watched the trailer so many times, the last one, and she's running around the house. Oh my gosh, look at her butt! I'm like, oh, I'm like, <laughs> uh, I don't know, but uh, all right, <laughs> Kenny. Look, despite the fact that rabbits are covering Sir Mix a lot, uh, <laughs> I'm going to sell this one. Um, I'm going to sell this one. Though there's an interesting side note here. The director, Garth Jennings, directed one of my favorite underrated movies, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Galaxy. I'm a big Douglas Adams fan, and I actually think that movie delivered for me as a Douglas Adams fan. So I'm intrigued by that. But, you know, if I got to see this movie uh, with Christian's daughter and his family, uh, like the weird creepy uncle just sitting in the corner, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to sell it. You know what? I thought the same as you did about this uh, throwaway one whatever mm -hmm. I, I'm gonna tell you the trailers have really worked for me I'm gonna buy them I think they've shown a little bit more heart to them than I thought they would they've shown some characters that I already feel myself wanting to connect with a little bit more even though it's just a trailer so yeah at this point for me it's going to be a buy all right what's next THR reports that The Raid and The Raid 2 director Gareth Evans will write and direct the new film Apostle. The movie is about a mysterious man who travels to a remote island in search of his missing sister after she's kidnapped by a religious cult, which is demanding a ransom for her return. Variety Today is also reporting that Beauty and the Beast and the guest Dan Stevens has been cast as the lead in the film. A release date has not been set. John Byersell, Gareth Evans, new film Apostle with Dan Stevens. All you have to say is Raid director directed new film by I mean whatever it is and th on top of that just as a nice kicker this story sounds really cool adding Dan <laughs> Stevens into that really fascinated to see what he's going to do in Beauty and the Beast as the Beast to me this is a no-brainer this one's a buy Kenny what do you think 
the movie talk audience is going to learn that I do have some gaps in my viewing uh, resume with movies, so I still need to see the Raid and Raid Two. JT would tell me every day. You're not alone. A lot of people <laughs> yeah. haven't seen those. Movies. Every day when I drive JT, pick him up from the bus station, uh, he'd be like, "Hey, you seen the Raid yet? I'm gonna get to him." But I'm buying this just simply because of the description of the story. A religious cult. It's got a little bit of the Taken vibe. A guy going after rescuing things. That just sounds interesting. And based on how many people I know respect love the Raid, I'll see it. Mark. Yeah. It sounds like what I wanted the leftovers on HBO to be. You know, I wanted to see like the introduction of a cult. And I just want to see somebody kick ass for an hour and a half. That's what we're going to get with this movie. The only thing about this that I sell is you cannot get a good director's headshot without looking pretentious and douchey. Like, look at they always have to. Oh, I got a camera with me, so that means I hate when or they do doing this. this. Right. Yeah. Frame, it's like it's like oh, is you're framing me up? I'm framing you up because I'm always thinking about shots. Just just take a picture. <laughs> it's not his fault. It's probably the, the photographer. He's like, holding you know the camera. He bought a camera. The, the photographer told. To do it. He's like, can't someone just kick kick someone in the face? And he's like, no, no, no just take the picture. And he's like, fine, don't use that one. And they did. So screw that photographer. Um, it, <laughs> for me, it's a buy because Gareth Evans is awesome. What I really like and I want to buy is that I haven't heard anything about a Raid uh, remake recently. It's been kind of yeah. gone. It's like that silent fart that was there for a second. And now it's gone. <laughs> um, but like, so it, for, for me, I want... I want this guy to do more, 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 and have Dan Stevens in it. You're right, Ken. It sounds so cool, this premise. And to have, you know, that Dan Stevens can get into that dark place if you've seen The Guest. Um, and then I think his star is going to rise with The Beast, even though he's in costume for the whole damn thing. It doesn't matter. I think this is, that he's going to bring an element to that particular movie the same way that, say, Andy Circus did with Caesar. So this is going to be something to watch. I am excited about Gareth Evans doing more. I want to see him doing more. I'm going to tell you something, though, right now. Yeah. I want them desperately to do a Raid remake in North America. Really? Desperately. And here's why. For no other reason than this. Number one, maybe it would be good. Who knows? But even if it's not, Nobody had ever watched my all-time favorite cop film, Infernal Affairs. Mm. Nobody uh, see had saying. ever seen that Wait, movie until Scorsese did his remake. Once Scorsese did The Departed, and then people found out there's an original, then people finally went to go see the original, right? Nobody had seen The Ring, the original The Ring, until there was a North American version. Then people went, decided to go and check it out. If for no other reason, I'm always shocked how many people have still not seen the, the Raid films. If for no other reason, I hope they do a North American remake, just so it'll draw attention to the original again. Maybe more people will check out the original. All right, what's next? Jay Baruchel announced yesterday that a sequel to Goon is not only ready, but it's been filmed and now has a release date and title. Goon The Last Enforcer will hit Canadian theaters on March 17th, 2017, <laughs> marking their directorial <laughs> debut of Baruchel. Sean William Scott and Baruchel will reprise their roles as well as Leif Shriver's Ross the Boss Rhea. Mark, buy or sell the return of Goon with The Last Enforcer. This is a buy, man. I still remember where I was when I saw the first Goon. It came out of nowhere. It was a really funny, clever sports movie. I went over to Christian's place. We, we put it on. We did not expect a whole lot. We're like, Stifler is going to be on ice. He's going to be beating people up. And it's a really good movie. It's got a nice, deeper layer than you might expect initially, but it also just has a lot of funny stuff, a lot of good hockey jokes in there. So I know certain people are really going to buy it as well, right? I do buy it. I, I really thought it was a charming little film. It had more heart to it than you thought. Because the way people were talking about it before I saw it, I thought, oh, this is going to be just tons of laughs, just lots of laughs. No, there's actually heart and there's a story to it. Leif Scheiber is amazing in it. I thought he was great. I'm really glad they're doing another one. I don't know that I would be if it wasn't the original cast coming back, but since it is, for me, it's a big buy. I'm going to buy it. I mean, I love the first movie, and I'm, I'm with you. I, I didn't know what it was going to be. I thought it was going to be more in a kind of slapstick comedy type mm -hmm. of way, and it wasn't. You're right. It had a lot of layers to it, a lot of heart to it, and I think it's arguably Sean William Scott's best performance of all time. Um, no doubt. Yeah. And, no doubt. Uh, well, the Stifler thing was pretty iconic. <laughs> but it's just, it, there's just something. You saw him go to places that I didn't know he could go, and it's, it's a really good movie, but I don't know. It's not a movie to me that when I was done with it, I'm like, oh, I can't wait to see another one. Um, it's not to say I don't want to see another one, but I just never th thought like, like, there's more stories they could tell. Obviously, with him, he's an older hockey player at this point. He was never the it was Happy Gilmore, but serious is mm -hmm. really what it was. Right. But um, I want to see what happens in this one. So yes, it's a buy for me, Kenny. I'm absolutely going to buy because I and this sounds weird to say, but I think Sean William Scott is one of the underrated comedic performers out there. Now, role models kills me every time yep. he 
is pitch perfect in that. So anything that gives him a chance to continue to ply his trade in the public eye. Plus, Jay Baruchel, I actually really enjoy Man Seeking Women, which is a TV show that he stars right. and has a lot of creative control on. So if he's directing, I'm buying that they're uh, going to have some fun. Uh, John, if I can make a note, I really don't enjoy all the humor and factoids that Kenny is bringing to this program. <laughs> it's really <laughs> starting to bug me. Can you tone it down a little bit? Sure, yeah. thanks, sir. <laughs> all right. We will has reprimand ended. him later. All right, what's next? According to Variety, <laughs> Sony Pictures is eyeing Don't Breathe director Fede Alvarez to helm The Girl in the Spider's Web, the sequel to The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Stephen Knight penned the script, which is based on the new novel by David Lagerkrantz, who took over for the series after the original novel's author, Stieg Larsson, died in 2004. In the novel, Salander teams up with a journalist to enter a ruthless underworld of spies, cyber criminals, and government operatives, some willing to kill to protect their secrets. Christian Byersel, Fede Alvarez, directing The Girl in the Spider's Web. A uh, huge buy. This is, is uh, one of the biggest buys of the, sto of the stories today because I didn't give a crap about the movie anymore. I was like, it's on. I still want Rooney Mara to come back. She doesn't come back. I'm going to sell it again with Fede Alvarez or not. But that's the guy to get to continue this type of tone for this movie. But it's going to be a real struggle. Not getting Daniel Craig back, they can deal. If they have to recast once again and Rooney Mara doesn't come back, but from what it seems like is that she's been very excited. We were talking about it with Mark Riley beforehand in those Sony leaks that came out. She was kind of pushing, where is it? Where is it? When, when do we where, get to do the When are we going to do it again? Yeah. So I think they're going to get her. So that's why I'm, I'm incorporating it into my buy. But her with Fede Alvarez, who is an up and coming skyrocketing talent at this point, I think this is a great, great choice for him to direct this type of tone for this franchise. Yeah, we're spending all our money on these stories today yeah. because I'm not only going to buy it, I'm going to buy that the fact that he is directing this movie, I don't need any of the original cast to return. I'd like to see Rooney Mara back, but I don't need her because the way that this guy can tell a horrific kind of story and make it dark and suspenseful and tense, you could put anybody, which he has done in his films in the past, you could put a bunch of you know no-names in there and still get a great story. So Alvarez doing it, now look at us. We're excited about this franchise that we assumed was dead and on an island somewhere. Uh, I'm going to buy, simply because this morning at breakfast with Christian going over the notes, I brought up the story to him, and he had a mouthful of oatmeal. I was like, that's such a great idea. <laughs> um, I have to buy, just based on that. Uh, but this is, like you said, an up-and-coming director, but what intrigues me is it's kind of a cross-genre switch. Don't breathe evil dead, horror, mm. scary stuff. He's bringing that kind of uh, aspect and, and, and angle to something that uh, is kind of different and freaky in its own way. Uh, Rooney Mara's eyebrows uh, definitely horror in their own way. Um, so I'm intrigued by what he's going to bring to this. Yeah, I, I got a Binomix. I really enjoyed the original. And I, I'm one of the very, very few people that actually preferred the first North American version of it over the original, I believe it was Swedish mm -hmm. uh, version of it. I, I just thought it was really that good. It is intriguing that they're skipping over like Girl Who Played With Fire and Girl Who Kicked the Hornet's Nest and stuff like that. And that's fine. They've clearly got a vision. They're moving forward. I am really still curious to find out if Daniel Craig will come back. I'm, I'm sure Rooney Mara will come back if they want her to. They might decide if they don't d get Daniel Craig to kind of refresh the cast as a whole. I hope they bring Rooney Mara back because I believe she got an Academy Award nomination for this, if I'm not mistaken. So so yeah, overall, I'm going to buy it. All right, guys, listen, we do this show live, and what we'd like to do is at the end of the show, we save a little bit of time for you to send in some live Twitter questions. If you want to start sending in your questions, you can do that now. Just make sure you're following us on Twitter, at Collider Video, fire in those questions, and Wendy will pick out a few to ask at the end of the show. But I do want to remind you that Movie Talk is not the only show on Collider Video today. Today at 5 p.m., this whole group is back again for Jedi Council talking all things Star Wars. Make sure you come back for that. And also at 2 p.m., we are putting up the Movie Trivia Schmodown panel from Los Angeles Comic Con that uh, all of us got to be a part of. Make sure you check that out at 2 p.m. And of course, don't forget, as we mentioned earlier, Wendy and Natasha have their trailer reaction for the Wonder Woman trailer, you're going to want to check that out as well. With all that out of the way, now it's time for Mailbag. Listen, if you've got a topic or a question you'd like us to address on the show, just email us anytime at collidervideo at gmail.com. Maybe you'll see your email here on Movie Talk, maybe on the weekend mailbag shows. You'll never know until you send one in. So, Natasha, what's in the mailbag today? Okay, Colleen writes, what's up, Collider crew? Thanks for all the awesome work. I try to catch your show every day and love all the great work you do. Here's my question. What do you think the chances are that the DCEU will eventually cast Nightwing in one of their live-action movies? I'm surprised that a character as beloved as he is hasn't been brought to the silver screen as a Nightwing before. I don't think there's a strong chance for it, but I would really love if he got a spot in the upcoming Batman movie. Let me know what you think. Peace out, y'all. Um, 
Nightwing is is a character where here's the, the two sides of the coin. On the one side of the coin, like if I talk to my mom, say, "Hey, what do you think about Nightwing?" She'll say, "Who?" And I think if you talk to most people who don't read the comic books or watch the animated show and say, "What do you think about Nightwing?" They'll say, "Who?" Whereas if you say Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, uh, a lot of Joker, whatever, they'll know who those are. But he is beloved in the comic books. He's actually one of my all-time favorite comic book characters because the from birth to death the Dick Grayson story to me is one of the best in comics. The, the convoluted, complicated, uh, multi-layered relationship that he has with Bruce, the whole thing, when you really know the story of Nightwing, it is one of the most engaging ones there is. I do think that at some point in the DCU they have plans for a Nightwing. I don't know that we'll ever see a Robin per se, but I do think Nightwing, I would be surprised if in the next five years we don't see an, an incarnation of Nightwing on the big screen. What do you think? Mike? I dare say your mom didn't know who Deathstroke was before she watched the That's Crash true. Course video about yep. Deathstroke, and I think you're going to get shades of Nightwing in the Batman standalone movie that Ben Affleck is doing. It just makes too much sense to not have him in a central role, but I think you're going to get moments of that. They're going to tease us with that. Now, it doesn't mean that they need to use every tease and implement that as a full-fledged film going forward, but I think they want to see what the audience reaction to to seeing a hint of Nightwing. They want to see us speculate about it, and we will. I think you're going to see Nightwing soon. Well, that's that's absolutely right. I think that they're going to be kind of pepper him in there through a movie, get our interest going, because as someone who doesn't read all the comics, I know so much about Nightwing, obviously, because of hanging out with all you characters and hearing more about the hardcore comic book fans and what, the, like you're saying, it's such a story that people would want to see. And I do think that they're listening to fans about which storylines they should kind of explore because it's not going away anytime soon. They're going to be working on these movies for a very long time and they want to get the most intriguing storyline. So I think Nightwing is one that we will see eventually. Kenny. Until recently, I thought Nightwing was a club in New York I couldn't get into. But um, <laughs> I'm also surprised he wasn't one of the 42 characters in Justice League or <laughs> Batman v. Supes. Um, but absolutely, it is, a, it is a name that is out there that people know. Dick Grayson. You people know that name too. Yeah, they know that so name. So yeah. it's they're gonna do it right. Actually, not taking shots at DC. They, they're not just gonna throw them out there. They'll have a plan. They'll get them in there. It makes sense for this kind of character to show up. You know, uh, side note, you've probably heard me tell the story before, but like I think, you know, my my all time favorite moment in in a comic book ever was this moment was at the end of the Nightfall series. And there was a series a number of years ago where Bane actually breaks Bruce Wayne's back. And for a while, Bruce Wayne goes away and he gets this guy that named Azrael to become the new Batman for a while instead of Dick Grayson, who was Nightwing at the time. So this long story arc goes on and ultimately Azrael goes crazy. He starts killing people. He beats up Robin, all that kind of stuff. So eventually Bruce Wayne comes back, has to beat Azrael and take back the mantle of the bat. So when that story kind of finishes itself, there's this incredible issue that I think is one of the most emotionally satisfying and riveting issues of comics ever. And it's this moment where, okay, everything's fine now, everything's settled. And Dick Grayson comes to the Batcave and he confronts Bruce. And now Dick Grayson just helped him beat Azrael and get everything back. But they have this confrontation where it's basically, and I'm just giving you the short version, where it's basically, why the hell did you go to somebody else? Why not me? When you needed somebody else to protect Gotham, why did you go to some stranger instead of coming to me? It's beautifully done. The illustrations of it, the, the wordplay of it, it's beautiful. And I'll just never forget it ends, a scene ends with Bruce Wayne still kind of broken and battered from the fight. He puts his hand on Dick Grayson's so shoulder, and, and I'm paraphrasing a bit, but it's basically, this is the way it is sometimes between fathers and sons. And it is one of the most beautiful moments, and yet emotionally deep moments I've ever read in a comic book. And if for no other reason, I would love to see a Nightwing just because of that scene. Find the issue if you can to give it a read. All right, guys, well, I said we're gonna save a little bit of time at the end of the show, take your live Twitter questions, and we're gonna do that right now. So Wendy, what have you picked out? First one comes from Adrian M. Soto, who writes, seen the Wonder Woman trailer so many times, but was it too early to release? The movie doesn't even come out until June of 2017. It's a difficult question to answer because I'm just so damn happy with the trailer that maybe in a few weeks I'm gonna step back and go, you know what, We to release your second full trailer already this far out, you might be blowing your load a little bit early. Uh, but right now, I'm just so happy with the trailer, it's hard for me to have perspective on that. Kenny, what do you think? I think it's okay and it's a good idea because DC's been 
embattled is a nice way to say it. Yep. Wonder Woman has a lot of pressure on it. If they feel they got something good or they want to convince us that they have something good, why hold it back? Mark? I don't think they're blowing their load early, John. They have many loads to blow with this film. <laughs> and I think that you're going to see multiple trailers that show us too much. So I don't think it's necessarily a coincidence that this trailer happened to come out the day before Doctor Strange came out. I think that there's a little bit of DC that is still like, you know, oh, oh, you guys are going to release your big time. Well, well, guess what we got? We got a trailer for that. I think there's still a little bit of that younger brother mentality. I don't think it's just that, though. I think you're right that they released it at the same time, but I don't think it's a matter of like, well, you're putting yours out. We're going to put ours out. I think it's because at this point in, in marketing, everybody's talking about what? A comic book movie because you're getting the release of Doctor Strange. So while the comic book movie fever is high for the weekend, why not drop? Well, here's another comic book trailer. So it's it's good while everybody's in the in the spirit of going to see Doctor Strange. Now they're in the spirit of another iconic character that they can see in Wonder Woman. So I think it's more of a, this is the time to release it as opposed to, well, you guys did this and we're gonna do that. I don't think it's necessary to do that for them, but I think well, you, also, you want this trailer playing through Christmas because there's going to be a lot of movies that people go to see in yeah. theaters. So you're probably going to see this trailer when you go see a movie through the holiday season and then you worry about releasing another one early in 2017. Well, that's also the other point is that now because this is released and Doctor Strange drops, you can bet your ass you're going to see the Wonder Woman trailer when you go to see Doctor Strange this weekend. That's that's the way to do it. You put it out. You, you, you had that coming out right beforehand. It makes a lot of sense. Do I have to bet my rear that I'm going to do it? <laughs> well, you literally put it on the market. You do that. Just don't blow your load. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. I'm, I'm going to guarantee you right now, had Batman versus Superman and had Su Suicide Squad been universally loved, we would not have two Wonder Woman trailers out already at this point. Mm. I think this is a part of DC's overall strategy of, once again, changing the narrative. They want to get people to stop talking about Batman vs. Superman and Suicide Squad, two movies that I liked, by the way, but they want to get the discussion off of that and looking towards the future, looking towards Justice League, looking towards Wonder Woman. And I think because that's still their strategy right now of changing the narrative, which is a brilliant strategy, by the way, that's why we got this trailer right now. But uh, we'll see if it was a good or bad move in the months ahead. All right, what else do we got? The Dutch movie guy writes, so Rogue One won't have an opening crawl. What do you guys think of this? And he included a link from Star Wars News Net about Rogue One opening without the traditional crawl. Yeah, apparently it's pretty much official now. There will not be uh, an opening crawl for Rogue One. I think it's a mistake. Actually, I, I think it's a, it's a terrible mistake. Now, that being said, I'm because I'm a Star Wars fan, I'm gonna be huffy and puffy about it, <laughs> and I'm gonna be really pissed off when this movie starts and there's no opening crawl, and I will never change my mind that it's a huge mistake. But let's be real at the same time. It's the first 45 seconds of the film. The movie will start, I'm gonna be pissed off for a second, and then we'll get on with the movie and everything will be totally fine. It's just 45 seconds of the movie, but I still do think that this is the one thing that is your hallmark. This is your fingerprint of a Star Wars movie. I believe they're making a terrible mistake, but in the long run, it won't really matter. Ken, what do you think? I, I agree with you, John. I want to be level-headed about it. I want to be like, well, the, the crawl! But I mean, all the new comics have crawls. All the new novels have crawls. The my games Star Wars have crawls. cereal has a crawl as I pour it out <laughs> into my bowl. The <laughs> Episode nine, breakfast, comes out into my story. I think it's a, I don't want to say it's a mistake, but it's a weird choice. But I also feel it's them saying these are not the main storyline. This is Rogue One. This is a standalone. This is an anthology. It's going to be different. Christian. I don't like it. Uh, yeah, I'm not a, I, 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 it's been rumored for a long time. We've talked about this on Jedi Council. I mean, yeah. Kathleen Kennedy has hinted to prepare us that there's always going to be a call for a very long time. And Ellis, I understand the arms folded. I really do get it. Um, <laughs> But what, but what I'll what I'll say is that we're just gonna have to deal with it. But they have to be consistent though, because this is the this is the risk they do with this though. If they don't do it for Rogue One, you're not gonna see it for Han Solo. You're not gonna see. It. They've got to make it significant to where they're gonna do. It's just for saga films, which I don't like. I think that it is something like Ken says when you any a video game or 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 you, well Rebels doesn't really do it, but they did it for Clone Wars, I think too. Didn't yeah, they did. And, one line. Yeah. Yeah. I, it, it is pretty synonymous with Star Wars. I mean, it's, it's I'm going to miss it. I'll, uh, same thing with you. And I'm like, it's the same way we kind of felt when, when the Fox thing was miss, missing in yeah, the beginning. the fanfare. And then you're not going to see the the crawl and you're going to be like, and then the movie's going to start and you're going to forget, forget about it. Mark, will you be joining me? Uh, like when we probably see this movie together for the first time mm -hmm. and that movie Aww. starts and the first five seconds, we will be the lone voices going, boo! Oh, that the oh, oh. <laughs> 
I'm not going to be. It's, I'm not going to be booed. As soon as we see a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, which they better not change that, and the screen goes black, I will run up to the front of the theater and do the crawl for you guys. <laughs> it's a dark time of the rebellion. War! Oh, we're, we're waiting for Star Wars, but we, we got to get the Death Star stop and get, 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 dot, dot, dot. Yo, wait, here's a question. I'm going to say this, though. I, as a Star Wars fan, it's my job to rationalize every decision they make and spin it into gold somehow. So here's what I'm going to say. Is that it's going to make the bombastic opening of the trilogy films all that much more special when we don't get to see that in a theater every year or twice a year like Christian wants. So now we only get that when it's going to be an episodic film. So it's like I've always talked about how there is a certain tantric experience with Star Wars when you do have to wait a little bit because it makes that journey worthwhile once it pays off. So that is how I have rationalized not having a crawl in the saga films or the other ones. All right, Christian, Christian can I have you come over here for a second and just, just restrain him for a minute before, yeah. I, before I ask what I'm about to ask. Okay, so... You bring up a very interesting question, but let me ask you this. Yeah. You said, hey, hey, once that screen set up a long time ago and got so far, far uh -huh, away, uh -huh. what, if, what if they pull that out too? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just I'm mad as hell. <laughs> I'm not gonna think but, but, but again, that's easier than what I was going to do because if they start just going to the movie, I will yell in the theater. This takes place a long time ago <laughs> in a galaxy <laughs> far away. <laughs> All right, let's take two more questions. All right, this one comes from Darth Vanquish, and he has a super important question. <laughs> what happened to Ken's ponytail? Oh. Uh. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> that's not that important. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I have a policy. Uh, you know, Dennis and I decided a long the time Yankees. ago, no long hair on guys. <laughs> right. yeah, we are the Yankees. We said, no. I, what, what did happen to the ponytail? Uh, well, you know, also, uh, you know, I, I felt if I had a ponytail around you, John, you'd feel like you're back in Canada. Like, <laughs> He'd some, be Jeff. <laughs> yeah, Jeff. Yeah, I'd be Jeff. Hey, you need man. to wear a denim jacket. Yeah. We're upset. <laughs> you you want to go watch some kids in the hallway? Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a New York Canadian Bring some character. Putin. Yeah. Um, no, Putin. man, it's time for a change, man. I, I loved what I did for the last year, and I and for 17 years I was in a job that I couldn't have facial hair or long hair because I was too busy arresting people, and so uh, I I became a little hippie again, like when I was a rock radio DJ. I used to have hair down to my, my belt. So it was fun for a year. Like any good guy who believes in pro wrestling, I needed to show up with a new gimmick. I feel like it's you working. with the ponytail was kind of like James Bond in like the Lazenby Dalton era. You know, it's like entertaining for what it was, but we knew it wasn't going to last and then we got Pierce Brosnan yep. you're back to being Pierce I am Remington still <laughs> you, look, you look very dignified by the way I think yeah. it's a good look for you yeah, thank you sir Will Forte, Forte. Yeah. <laughs> alright last question of the day alright last one comes from Frank Torres who writes question for Kenny and Campia hmm. are you guys ready to take on Sam Witwer and Freddie Prince Jr. in the Schmodown uh, place or bets uh, Kenny, you want to take this one first? I absolutely respect Freddie Prinze Jr. and Sam Witwer. There's no doubt that they are real Star Wars fans who absolutely know what they're talking about. But don't forget the guy who grew up alone in his room, not talking to women, <laughs> reading nothing but Star Wars books. <laughs> All right? I had Air of the Empire in my hands before it had even gone into the public and, and exploded. I knew Luke drank hot chocolate created by Lando Carisian while you guys were too busy talking to girls. I <laughs> No, I'm not speaking for Campia. He's a married man. I am, this is nerd rage going to come out. This is my grand stage. I respect what you guys know, but do not underestimate the lonely kid in this room. You know, ever since uh, Sam Witwer was jilted out of that Emmy for his portrayal as Doomsday in uh, Smallville, remember that, kids? Or, and, you know, Freddie Prinze Geller. I mean, all that kind of stuff. All due respect to these guys. But they just simply do not know what they're walking into. Like, that's great. You became Star Wars fans. We were born to it, all right? So, uh, yes, we're looking forward to that and getting that out of the way and moving on with the other real things in life. So, anyway, with that being said, that'll do it for our installment of Movie Talk today, guys. Thanks so much for joining us. I want to thank the guys sitting at the table with me, making his first appearance with us, Mr. Kenny Knapsack. Kenny, where can people find you online? You can follow me at Ken Knapsack across all social media platforms, including Tinder. Sitting. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting right beside him, Christian Harloff. Uh, for me, at Christian Harloff. 
<laughs> you can find me Twitter and Instagram we mentioned Jedi Council that's going to happen the Schmodown panel tomorrow Schmodown with Jeff Snyder Jason Inman goes on and I will like to say that for fans that created a show that is all about what happened in the week of Collider Video and Schmoes it's called the Schmoville <laughs> show you should go there it's a really they really get in, in depth with it go check it out sitting over here Mr. Mark Ellis uh, you can find me on Twitter at Mark Ellis Live and I will be having my official press conference when I announce my retirement as the funny guy from Movie Talk <laughs> <laughs> and Napsock good luck with that buddy you kicked ass today man it is so happy to make me part of the team <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not quite sure what to say to that. Do Sitting I. over there, we got Natasha Martinez. <laughs> Natasha, where can people find you? You guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram at NatashaLexis underscore. And Wendy Lee. You can find me on YouTube at the Movie Couple channel and also on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat at Wendy Lee Zaney. You can follow me on all social media simply at John Campy. And make sure you subscribe to Comic Con HQ, where John Schnepp and I have our show, Film HQ. New episodes air every Saturday. And a little guy named Mark Hamill's got his no show <gasps> launched on our network as well here pretty soon. More information about that later. Special thanks. Thanks to all you guys. Remember, jump into the comment section. Leave your thoughts on all the issues we discussed here today. We want to know what you think about that stuff. That'll do it for us, guys. Thanks so much for joining us. And until next time, bye-bye. Hey, guys. If you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.